I got to play out there before you guys came oh, out there, uh -huh. and I thought that that course was impossible uh, because, you know, like the fairways were tilted oh, yeah, one way, and then it was like turning around this way. <laughs> like whoever designed that was having a bad day, you know what I mean? And they wanted to take it out on people. Yeah. So for you to win now, I'm just like, okay, like she's the real deal. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. the first two holes of playoff is just me being, you know, on my stomach. And <laughs> I was just so worried about my health. <laughs> Sorry, this is just crazy to me. She won the U.S. Open while she was sick. Uh, you know, I think that that just put you into another level of greatness. You know what I mean? Yeah. Hey, yo, so check this shit out. It's your boy Roger Steele with yet another dicey episode of Range Talk. And our guest today, uh, I'm looking for the, the right series of words to just sum up how, uh, just keep it simple, dog. Just start sweating and everything, too. Um, Yuka Sasso is dope as shit. Uh, you obviously remember her for breaking the internet with one of the most beautiful swings in the game, then for being the youngest to win the Women's US Open. Uh, but that's just the tip of the iceberg. Things I wanted to know were, uh, what goes into becoming a major champion? How does a champion deal with championship pressure? And how the hell did her swing get so beautiful? Is there a process or, or a series of DVDs I could buy perhaps, or a, a corrective elective surgery that maybe I'm not privy to? Take my money, Yuka. Uh, but I'm serious, this episode is so fire, uh, I'm legit about to rewatch it with y'all. No, real talk, there's a TV in the studio. Uh, could y'all just cut the cameras and play it up there, please? Oh, I, gotta, I gotta sign off. This is Range Talk. Okay, could y'all play it now? See, now I had an option to interview you or I could just shut up and just let you swing the whole time. And I think that if I just let you swing, it'll probably do better. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just joking. <laughs> so look, it's so nice to meet you. I'm a big fan. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you know, you just came on the radar, busted on the scene very recently. But everything from like how you compose yourself as a champion to mm -hmm. just how you play the game is so inspiring to me. So thank you for letting me talk to you. Thank you also, Roger, for you know having me, and I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah. <laughs> so tell me about. So you grew up. You were born in the Philippines. Mm -hmm. Yes. So tell me about growing up in Philippines for you personally. What was that like? So um, I was born in the Philippines and stayed there till I was four, and I went my I went to Japan for four years and studied there until grade two. Uh -huh. and then so I, how old are you at that point? At grade two is like uh, I was like a, I don't know, like a baby. <laughs> oh, okay, all right, all right. I wasn't really doing anything. Okay, okay. And then um, I told my parents that I wanted to play golf. You told them that you wanted to play golf? Yes. So what made you fall in love with golf? Um, I watched um, Paula Kramer won her U.S. Women's Open. Right. Um, and I said, I want to win that tournament. So you so saw the U.S. Women's yeah, Open as yeah. a kid and said, I want to win that tournament, yeah. so I want to play golf. Yeah. And then they brought me to Philippines to play golf because um, the practice facilities and all that is much better there. Um, the weather, um, it's better than Japan. It doesn't get cold. So right. I stood there and, yeah, practiced golf. So your mother is from the Philippines. Yes. Your father is, is Japanese. Japanese yes. And so how has that been growing up, kind of having, you know, kind of that dual heritage situation? Mm -hmm. um, I would I, honestly, like at, at the young age, um, I experienced, um, you know, I lived in the Philippines for a long time and lived in Japan. So um, I've seen the good sides um, of the country. So I'm very proud of, um, you know, being half Filipino, half Japanese. And right. I think I'm, you know, um, I have the good side of Japan and I have the good side of Philippines, so. So you are literally the best of both worlds. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. So I'm, I'm here to hype you up, you know what I mean? So if ever you need like a PR person or something like that, you could call me okay. and I could help you with all of that, you know. Thank you. I'll call you. <laughs> I'll call you. <laughs> so, okay, so tell me about your junior golf career. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you're getting into golf, you say I want to play. How quick did you get good at golf? I wasn't, I, it wasn't that quick. I wasn't really good. Um, maybe probably the first three or four years. Uh -huh. And then I started competing in Asia. And then I started coming here in US to play the Junior World Championship in San Diego. So you said, wait, you said you weren't good for the first four years, but after that you were able to play in like Junior World yeah. Champion. So you just got really good, really fast, like. Like yeah. at some point, like I just my golf just boom. When I grew up a little. Yeah, you got stronger. Yeah, I got stronger, and then yeah, I played good, and then 
um, yeah, since then I started playing in USGA events right. and tried to qualify for US Women's Open at 14 or 14? Yeah. At 14? Yeah. Did you try every year from 14? Yes. Until, when was it? I think 2019, the first time I qualified for US the, the Women's US Open. Women's Open. Yeah. I'm just so amazed that you set this goal for yourself and then you just like, you just went after it ferociously until you got it. Yeah. I do that all the time and it don't work out like that. I mean, yeah. that's the difference. You were great. I'm not, okay, whatever. So, so tell me, so what are some of your favorite uh, junior golf accolades? Like, you know, things that you accomplished that you're super proud of in your junior golf career? Oh, hmm. there's a lot. Um, mm -hmm. Hard to choose. It's hard to choose. Yeah. Cause you did so much stuff. Yeah. <laughs> we could probably we could probably just cut the camera and we could just roll all of her junior golf accomplishments at this point. You know what I mean? Because she, I'm not gonna make you list all of them. <laughs> so then you go and you turn pro mm -hmm. 2020. Yep. So and how was the transition from amateur golf and junior golf to you know becoming a professional in 2020? It was um pretty easy cause, uh -huh. because of the COVID um, pandemic. Um, we didn't have any much tournaments. So um, from what I did as an amateur, it was like a continue, like another step of golf. So um, the first year I played in Gel PGA. And Over in Japan, though, right? Yeah, yeah in yeah. Japan. And, you know, I've gained so much experience, but um, it didn't really change of um, how I see the, the golf or yeah. my um, game. Um, because I think I just enjoyed it. And yeah. then, yeah, it was, it was fun. I hear every time I listen to like a great athlete talk, that's what they say. It's like golf doesn't feel like work or like the sport doesn't feel mm -hmm. like work. It's just yeah. the enjoyment and then yeah. you got a chance to compete at a bigger stage. Mm -hmm. So for you, it was just business as normal. As soon as you turn pro, it's just like, oh, this is just like amateur golf with different people, right? Um, I, would, I would say it's um, amateur golf. I'll probably say, um, obviously the golfers, the prof professional golfers is much better than the amateur golfers right and you know playing with them is like a dream come true to me right and so uh, I would say it's different but my perspective of the game didn't change exactly. um, yeah so I think it's been really great so you go you turn pro 2020 or 2020 mm -hmm. but then 2021 you win two tournaments back to back in Japan, yeah, yeah, in 2020, yeah. And so then, so you coming into the, it's June, you coming into the U.S. Women's Open, mm -hmm. and do you already know, like, yeah, I'm probably about to win it this year? Is that, <laughs> no. is that crossing your mind? No, so. You could be honest with me, though. Nobody going to call you arrogant or anything if you say that. So, yeah, I started golf because I wanted to win the U.S. Women's Open, right. but as I played golf more and more, I, I came to realize this tournament is not easy to win. <laughs> <laughs> so I was um, maybe maybe you know somewhere in the future, but not soon. Right. So um, yeah, it came like sooner than I thought. So um, yeah, it was unexpected. So going into that week, was it anything different about how you prepared, or like was it anything you know different about like where your things that was going good with your game, or like parts of your game that was trending in the right direction? T tell me about like what went into that week for you. Um, I didn't really change anything. It's just. Um, same process um, from other terms that I've been doing. Um, so yeah, um, just played a good golf and you know had a chance to win it and then finish it off. And you did it. <laughs> I, I played out at the uh, so I played out at the Olympic Club mm -hmm. for the media day. And okay. so I got to play out there before you guys came oh, out there. Uh -huh. And I thought that that course was impossible uh, because, you know, like the fairways were oh, tilted yeah, the one way and then it was like turning around this way. <laughs> like whoever designed that was having a bad day. You know what I mean? And they wanted to take it out on people. Yeah. So for you to win now, I'm just like, OK, like she's the real deal, mm -hmm. you know. So tell me about like that week playing in the tournament mm -hmm. was did you feel any heightened pressure once you got into contention or like how was that for you? Um, so like you said, the slopes are very severe. Right. So like if the slope is right to left, you gotta aim at the trees and it, you're gonna end up on in the, the left rough. Exactly, <laughs> yeah. exactly. Um, but I think I hit a good shot from the rough that week. So I think that really helped. Right. And, um, you know, put, I was just so happy and thankful that I was there to be able to play in US Women's Open and to play with the past champion, um, like Inji Chan and 
um, six right. from Korea. Um, they were just so great, and I was just so thankful for that. And you know, I wasn't really thinking about winning or I have to do better. It's just me playing golf and trying to make a good score. Right, and then it just the rest took care of itself. Mm -hmm. What about when you got in the playoffs? Because now it's real. Yeah. Um, so did, did anything change? Did you like, oh my God, this is happening? <laughs> I tend to get very nervous in situations like that. I was that. nervous too, but um, I don't I don't know if I've said this in other interviews, but I got to stole my cake um, on hole number 17. Really? Yeah. On Sunday? Yeah, on Sunday. And I really wanted to go to the restroom, but I didn't have much time to, you know, to the playoff start. So um, we used to, how do you call that toilet? Um, like the the ones that the portal you, party at uh, the portal yeah yeah and it didn't feel good like <laughs> it didn't feel much good so um, but I didn't want to go back to the clubhouse yeah because it would have took so long yeah. and then it would have yeah you had to rush and yeah, yeah so yeah. the first two holes of playoff is just me being you know on my stomach and <laughs> I was just so worried about my health <laughs> so you playing in a playoff sick and you still win <laughs> but then. The last whole playoff, yeah. the hole number nine, um, my caddy Lionel said, okay, eat half a banana. Uh -huh. And I ate them. And once I get to my ball, to the fairway, I felt good. So I was like, okay, let's do this. <laughs> so you start, <sighs> I'm sorry, this is just crazy to me. She won the US Open while she was sick. Uh, you know, I think that that just put you into another level of greatness. You know what I mean? It's like Michael Jordan, the flu game. You watch a lot of basketball? I love basketball. You love it? Stephen Curry. <laughs> Steph is also a Callaway person. I hope that he sees that. I hope that he, I hope he sees that. We're going to set this up. He would also love your golf game. So, oh, yeah. you know, you could take some money off of him or something. I'm sure he got a lot of it. Uh, but no, so, so you sick. You coming down the stretch, you miraculously feel better, and then you just close the deal once your, once your stomach is okay. You're like, okay, now I just go ahead and win. That's how it happened? Um, no, I wasn't really thinking about winning. I just, you know, okay, my stomach feels better. I can swing better. And I hit a good second shot from the rough, and uh, probably that was 12 feet. Yeah. And sank the putt. And you weren't even, you weren't even focused on winning. Yeah. Is that something that's like common with you? Like you don't focus on winning, you let that take care of itself. You yeah. just play good golf, yeah. hit good golf shots. You stay on, stay on my process, stay yeah. on my routine. And if it's gonna happen, it's gonna happen. If it's not, it's not. So after you win, I mean, it's just like, you know, everybody was immediately made aware of you. <laughs> and there's obviously some very similar things about <laughs> your swing and this other person that people may have heard of, you okay. know what I mean? Uh, so let's, let, let me just go and talk about your swing a little bit. Where do you get the inspiration for that beautiful move that you make? I'm making an announcement right now. <laughs> Rory McIlroy. <laughs> um, he's been a good um, idol for me, a mentor. Um, you know, he ha obviously has a good swing, yeah. very good swing. and. Who wouldn't want to copy his swing, right? So you think that you actually like took some parts of his swing and put it into yours. You yeah. did that on purpose. Yeah, I did it on purpose. Because when I try to do that, it don't really work out that way. You know what I mean? Like I envision myself swinging like certain people and then it, my swing just still look weird, you know? <laughs> and so like, how, how was it? Was it because you did it when you were young or like? I think I, I think Roger, I think I did it when I was young. So I, it was easier for me to do it. Um, and I copied it, like I was watching his video like for an hour every day. What? Yeah, I just loved his golf, like every day. When he have a tournament, I always watch it. <laughs> That's how I like, like Rory. That's where I went wrong. <laughs> if I told you the stuff that I was watching, you know, all that time when I was a kid, it wasn't very, it wasn't doing anything for my golf game, you know? <laughs> you're way more focused than me, so I guess that's why you're here and I'm over here, you know, it's all good. Well, you hit a good shot, I saw you earlier. It was I, feel like you, I feel like you're being passive aggressive right now and just, you know, <laughs> trying to placate me a bit, but that's okay. So let's look, can I just look at your swing for a little bit? Yeah. I just want to see you hit a few shots. What club you got right here? I got the seven iron. Seven iron? Yeah. Okay, so let me just, you know, how okay. far you hit the seven iron? Uh, probably 160, mm. close to 160. Yeah, you hit it farther than a lot of my friends. <laughs> how far do you hit your six? Like 200? Well, it just, oh, it's more seven. so that I hit it the wrong direction, so. <laughs> oh my God. 
That was really good. <laughs> yes, yes, that was very. Yes, that was very good. Can Do you I want see one more? You? No, I just want to see one more. Okay. I want to just see just see if you could repeat that, you know, on camera. Okay. See how she's doing with the pressure, this Callaway pressure. Yeah. You know what I mean? Putting that through the Callaway combine right now. Oh, I pulled that big time. But it's like the swing was so pretty that it's like, it looked like you did that on purpose. <laughs> um, yeah, I did on purpose, so you can challenge me. <laughs> You're going to do very well in this game. All right, let me see one more real quick. Okay. Just a good swing. Just a good swing. That's a good shot. Oh, that was really good too. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> so talk to me about your style of play. You know, do you consider yourself like a power player? I mean, because obviously you hit the ball pretty far. Or, you know, what's, what's kind of like the strength of your game and the things you kind of lean into to get all these victories? Hmm. Like you said, I think I hit it longer than um, other players. Right. Um, I think that'll be one of my um, strengths in right. my game. And... What else do you think? I mean, I'm just saying, is it you, are you a good wedge player? Are you a good, like, what's, what's the other, like, um, obviously you do everything well because you just won a U.S. Open, but I'm just saying, what's the things that you look to and like, okay, I know if I'm having a bad day, like, I know I'm going to be able to do this. Um, I'll probably say my putting. Your putting? Um, I'm not a very putting person, but um, since I'm not, I, I wasn't good at putting when I was young. So I practice them a lot. So I think other than my strength, I'll go with my putter. So you just, and it's just because you work so hard at it. You yeah. put in the most work with the yeah. putter. Mm -hmm. I spend most of my time with putting, so. I like that. So now that you won the U.S. Open, mm -hmm. the Women's U.S. Open, and you set that goal for yourself and you've accomplished it, mm -hmm. I mean, like, is there anything else you want to do uh, in professional golf? Anything else you got your sights set on? Any other tournaments? Any other... What um, else you want to do? Obviously, my dream was to win the US Women's Open and right. be world number one. World number one. Um, and win all the majors. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, but I'm not in a hurry. You know, it takes time and, you know, trust the process and hopefully get to that. You know who said trust the process? Who made that? Who, who, who brought that saying to life for you? Um, my friends Your back friends? in the Philippines. Um, I want to say Miguel Tabuena. He is a Cowboy player too. Yeah, <laughs> I don't there know we know. go. I didn't know that. You shout it. I like so that. I like that. Buena and his coach J3 Altea. Um, right. So they've um, been a good friend to me of mine, and, and yeah, trusting the process will, you know, bring out everything together. Right. And talk to me about, you know, obviously your swing is so beautiful. You can hit, you, you can hit anything that you wanted to. Mm -hmm. Talk to me about coming over to the Callaway family. Obviously, she made a very good choice. She made the right choice and the only yep, choice. Yeah, I think so too. <laughs> <laughs> but talk to me, what went into that decision for you to join the Callaway team? Um, I don't know if everyone knows this, but I was using Callaway clubs when I was younger. And um, I, I loved their driver. Obviously, right. their woods, um, their irons is really pretty. And the wedge is also, um, it spins um, a lot. And that's what I'm looking for, a wedge. Right. And so, yeah, I'm, I'm loving everything. Putter also, um, they have a good team and they made a good, they, they made a good putter for me. So, yeah, it, it, I think every, everything's perfect. Right. And, and outside of you, you know, loving golf, just because you, you're obviously so good at it and how fun it is to play, are there any other things that made you fall in love with the sport? Um, I think, I'd like to thank, I think, Paula Kramer and Rory. Yeah. Um, they inspired me um, so much um, into this game. And um, it's just fun. It's, yeah. it's just, I think, more than golf. Um, you know, I mean, this will be my job, but it, I think it's more than job. Right. You know, I enjoy playing golf and, you know, trying to learn every day and improve every day. Right. And golf just gets harder and harder the more you play it. Exactly. So. It's fun. <laughs> right. And then I heard that, you know, you got this goal that you want to be able to play all of these different courses, all these different conditions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, how are you, is there like a, a systematic way that you're going about doing that? 
like going to make sure that you see everything that golf has to offer? Yeah, so I think golf is just so wide and um, you know, there's a lot of type of golf that you can play and I just want to have all those um, stuff experienced and you know, improve my game in the future. I think it's just fun to you know, learn a lot of different shots and right. different kind of game that you, you can play. So, you know, if I can improve my game in any way, I'll do it. Is it a shot that you're working on right now? Like yeah. once one, what's the shot that you're working on right now? Stinger shots. The sting oh, cool. Okay, <laughs> let me see the stinger. Let me see the stinger. Okay, I'll change my club. <laughs> okay, yeah, change your club. So I what got, club we got right here? I got five iron. A five iron? Right now, yeah. Okay. Can you hit a stinger? No, I cannot hit a stinger. So you about to teach me how to hit a stinger right now. <laughs> So we got stingers with Yuka, everybody. Uh, this is a bonus segment that I didn't know that I was going to offer to you all, but here we go. Okay. All right, so talk, walk me through this. What's, what's going into you hitting this stinger? So it's pretty easy. Um, oh, yeah, the... very. I, I imagine most things are easy to you, but okay. Um, but I'm not really good at it, so <laughs> don't expect me to hit a good shot there. Okay, just put the ball uh, on the right side, back, back up a little. Yeah. And short boxing, short downswing, and, you know, just swing it hard. So when you're using this shot, is this, this like your wind shot? You got some windy conditions you yeah, coming into? Yeah, so um, when we play in British Open, because yeah. um, I, I don't have much experience in the links course. Right. And this is the shot that we need when it's like super windy. Right. And yeah, and I, th I played the British Open and I realized I need those shots. So right. I've been working on it. And you could do that through the bag? You could hit that with your driver? With the driver? Yeah. I, yeah, I think so. I'm not going to ask you to because we got a short range and you hit the ball far wanna, too far for that. I wanted to show it to you, but... Okay, so the last thing I'm going to have you do is look at my swing. Okay. And if you just... Usually I try to ask people for something before we get out of here, so okay. a lesson from you would mean a lot to okay. me. Okay. Let's but you see. Really, but you really have to help me, though. Okay. Right. We'll see. Okay. So I'm going to hit your stinger shot. I'm going to get a five iron just like you. Yeah. Am, am I okay here? Okay. All right. So you All said... Right. So you said middle of the stand... Yeah, maybe a little more right in the middle. Like this? Yeah. Okay. And short back swing, short down swing. Do you choke down on the club? Hmm? You choke down on the club? Or Just a little, yeah. Just a little bit? Mm -hmm. Okay. There you go. That's really good. So what needs to happen is I just need to play golf with you forever? I think so, yeah. So you need to put me on your team? Yeah. Yeah, can join we talk my team. To, can we confirm? Can somebody, can I get on her team like right now? I mean, yeah, she's, you can join my team. Can we team. fist bump to it? <laughs> okay, I'm on her team. So, I mean, every y'all all saw that here. Uh, y'all heard it here first, people. Uh, thank y'all for y'all time. You <laughs> thank, can thank you so thank much. Thank you so much, Roger. Congratulations on all your success, and we will definitely be tuning in for the thank rest you. of it. Thank you so much, Roger. All right. I know, I know, y'all in love with Yuka. She's your new favorite golfer. You want to be like her. Calm down. Uh, what did we learn, though? Well, apparently it's stinger season for me and Yuka. Uh, also, you should be mortified if you ever in a hunt with her because there is literal ice in her veins. Uh, and we also learned that success starts with intention. So set lofty goals and attack them, but like on some honey badger type stuff. So you do it ferociously, but also with a little bit of cuteness so people don't fully know what you're capable of and then bam! major champion or something like that uh, and also if you want to do anything beautifully and masterfully the yuka approach sounds a lot like some advice marshawn lynch gave us a long time ago uh just watch it and do it over and 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 over and